<laughs> Chris is close enough I can throw something. That's why I don't sit up. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, we talked last week about um, the devil coming after us and things like that and how we knew what he was going to and the week at the cafe was pretty darn rough. Um, some days we had like six people there all day. Um, Friday night our, supposed to be our big money night. We only had 17 people there where usually we would have 40 to 50. Um, but And so we were at $475 in donations when we came in on, th on Friday morning. When we left on Friday night, Dot showed up. And praying over the boxes really works because on Friday night when we shut down, we had $1,400. Yeah. Just amazing. Tiffany opened up the boxes and she pulled out wads of hundreds out of both boxes and she's like, and I, she's making that noise that Char makes when she runs into the drill. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And she's like, look at this. And I wasn't really surprised because God does what God wants to do when he wants to do it. And it's always when we're, when we're at our lowest and we're, when we're least expecting it, he shows up and he, boom, he gives you a miracle. And uh, we, should, we should look for that in our lives, right? Uh, when, when things are going bad, we should look for God to show up and make things be all better. So let's go ahead and let's read our scripture for this morning. I'm going to read last week's too, along with it. Last week's was the first trumpet. And uh, we'll do a little recap once you, know, once you read it all, and then we'll uh, move on. So last week's, uh, chapter 8, verse 7, the first angel sounded, and hail followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. And that's what we ended last week with uh, all the grass gone, so nothing, the animals didn't have anything to eat, a third of the trees were burned up, um, so it, it was just, there's smoke in the air, and it's just a nasty disaster, and the, so you would think that there's not many fruit trees left, there's just not much green vegetation left on the earth at all, and um, as far as the fire goes, probably destroyed a lot of buildings, and just a lot of, a lot of ground, um, by itself, just a fire. So, and the hail was uh, the size of probably the size of boulders, and they would smash cars and smash buildings, and it was just a, a horrible, horrible sight. So, and that was, and we said, oh, this is this is just the first trumpet. So, this is the first day, and we still have seven years to go. So, I don't know how these are laid out within days. We do know that. Once we get on, um, they're, they're, people are supposed to be tortured for like uh, a certain amount of months with, uh, I think it's the uh, fifth trumpet, sixth, sixth trumpet, I think it's sixth trumpet, um, but we're not going to get there today. But uh, So we don't know how long the trumpets last, we just know that probably the destruction continues. So the green grass is burned and it's going to take a long time for it to grow back, if it even does grow back, and things like that. So, the second angel sounded and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the living creatures of the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. And the, and the third angel sounded and a great star fell from heaven burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and the spring waters, and the name of the star is Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was bitter. Then a third of the, and then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst 
of heaven saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. So, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we thank you for the day that you gave us. We thank you for the beautiful snow outside. We thank you for the chilly weather. We just thank you for the, for the cycle of life, Lord. Um, especially for the seasons that you give us here in Michigan. <clears throat> it uh, breaks up the monotony. And we just really um, enjoy, uh, enjoy that. Father, we pray for those that are traveling today and, and those that have traveled and they're away. And, those that are on vacation, all of our, our church family. Lord, we pray for the sick with the COVID, for the, the and, uh, and we just pray for your healing touch on each one of them. Lord, we know that your the time, the day of the Lord is coming near. And uh, we see it, we see all these things that are going on, and we know it's close, Lord. And we just ask that that we can uh, spread your gospel to as many as possible before that day comes, before it's too late. Now, Lord, as we open up your word, we ask for you to pour your blessings out on us, for you to open our hearts for us to understand. Give us understanding and give us wisdom as we study. Let, uh, let the teaching be pleasing to you, and let the learning be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Last week, you know, we, we, did, we talked about, and we, when we left, all the, the grass is gone and the animals don't have anything to eat, especially those animals that are grass eaters, the cows and uh, um, um, sheep and, you know, goats and things like that. They just go to eat anything, but still, they, <laughs> there's nothing left for them to eat and they're not going to live very long with nothing to eat. And then when, when we think, oh, well, okay, we can probably grow some more grass or something like that, this next trumpet blows, this angel blows that trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. Now, we don't know, it's, it's probably not a a comet or anything like that because a comet would be a star and that's in the next one so we you know we don't know what it is just a huge it could be a whole planet for you know that that's thrown into the sea doesn't matter what it is this angel has got this big old burning rock and if you can imagine picture this in your mind's eye a big old angel standing somewhere in the in the heavens that, that you can see and he takes this big old rock and he throws it into the sea. Okay, first off, imagine what happens with a tidal wave that's going to occur because of this huge thing being blown into the sea. So if you're living on a, a shoreline that's going to be affected by that, your house is gone. Life as you know it will not be the same because this angel was following orders and being a meanie head, and he just has to throw this into the lake. He couldn't just hold on to it. Of course, here's a, here's a question for you. Is the angel holding on to that thing right now? Just waiting for God to say, okay, go ahead and blow the trumpet. Or is he, or is he he's sitting in the coffee shop having coffee, thinking about what he's going to do? <laughs> the cat's like, yeah, there you go. That's what he's doing. Either way, the angel's being tortured, isn't he? Because the angel, if he knows what he's going to be, know what he's got to do, he's being tortured. That's because he's he's going to ruin all all the waters. He's going to kill all the fish and people with it. So he's he's in a, he's got to be in a bad way. Maybe hopefully God didn't tell him ahead of time what's going to happen. So all of life in existence before he has to throw that huge mountain into the lake isn't all bad and, and horrible. But you, maybe he was created just for that one purpose. Yeah. What if he, because he knows that in the end how well everything's going to be in the end, that he isn't in anguish of because he knows what's going to happen in the end and how we're all going to go back to heaven and be under one with God and Jesus. It could be, but I, I would... 
would think that they've got to have a conscience just like we do. And we, we feel guilty over stuff that we have to do here on earth. Decisions that we have to make. Right. So, but what if, if he is so accepting of God's word and God's will that, that he's okay with it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's the case, I don't like it. You <laughs> 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 can't tell me that would be satisfying now, throwing a mountain into an ocean. It would be satisfying? Yeah. Tell well, me you haven't thrown a rock into a pond and you're like, ooh. Yeah, but I haven't thrown a rock into a <laughs> pond and killed <laughs> all things <laughs> and, and killed most of the fish. That would be like throwing dynamite into the pond. <laughs> That's even better. And yet, yeah, I suppose that would be. Tell me how you leave the Spencer. <laughs> And a third of the sea became blood. So, yeah, I, I guess if we're throwing dynamite into a pond, it's going to be awful bloody, and the fish are going to be floating to the top. And But imagine this on a great scale. A third of the sea became blood. And a, um, and a third of the living creatures in the sea died. And a third of the ships were destroyed. What kind of ships are destroyed? We got, we've got enough shipping problems right now, don't we? Now we're going to destroy a third of the ships. That means a third of the um, freighter ships that are coming in that's, that's carrying goods around the world. And also our military ships are going to be gone. So the people, the military are going to be attacked. They're probably wondering what the heck's going on. And the, and the, the, the seawater is red. Bloody red. We're going to find out what kind of fish really exists, aren't we? You're going to have strange, strange, strange fish floating up on shore. And not only that, you got a third of the fish in the, in the ocean. Billions and billions and billions of fish in the ocean. What's going to happen when they float up to the top and then they start coming on shore and stanking? I don't care if you live in Michigan, you're going to smell that from Florida. That's going to be bad. And we're going to find out that, okay, all those, all those dinosaur fish, they're still alive. They're just down in the deeps and we don't see them. All those weird looking things. I've seen some weird looking, I, I'm, a, I'm a fish guy. I have fish tanks in the house. So I love to look at different types of fish. And did you know there's fish that you can see right through? What do, you, what do they call that? Eat? Iridescent? No, iridescent is no. lit up. Yeah. Lit up. Oh, they have those too. Oh, wow. Translucent? Translucent. Thank, thank you. Yeah, so you can you can see it's like they're they're not you you see an eyeball and you see a mouth and you see a, a little bit of organ, but you can see right through their their flesh. It's cool. I mean it's imagine one of them wash up on the shore. You're like, okay, what am I looking at here? It looks like you could reach down and grab his gizzard and it's not really there. I know a fish doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we can find out if there's a megalodon out there. I think there is. Yeah, I, I think there's all kinds of. Huh? Those fish, those big fish that come up with chunks on them. What, what are biting them? A megalodon. Exactly. Yeah. It's in there. It's uh -huh. just too deep. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't want to see the, all the fish come up down. Oh. So, and on top, of, on top of all this, all the fish floating up the shore. And, and a third of the ships destroyed. How are the how are the ships that aren't destroyed going to be able to navigate the waters? There's so many fish that are floating. How are you going to go fishing? Is it going to cover? Is it going to have like one layer cover the whole ocean? Is that why it's all blood? Is that why it's all red? Because the ocean is covered in fish, and then you got these. These fishermen that are trying to, we can't, the animals are dying, right? Because the grass is gone. So fishermen were going to be eating fish, just like in the Bible days. So imagine a fisherman trying to get through the waters with all these dead fish floating on top. And how is he going to throw a line into the water? He's going to, he's going to be hitting fish and pulling out dead fish. And you certainly don't want to eat those fish, now would you? I wouldn't want to eat those fish. No, it's kind of like taking too much garlic. Your body starts to smell like garlic. So you start eating those fish, your body's going to start to smell like dead fish. Oh, oh my goodness. I, I guess we should be... 
guess we should be glad that all of this is happening to the ungodly people and not the godly people. So we should strive to be godly and on God's good side, right? Because we take him off, look, look where we're going to be. That's not in a good spot. It, it, you think, well, that's all right. We still we're, we live in Michigan. We still got the Great Lakes and all the fresh rivers, and I can go bass fishing and all of that. And then we get to this third angel. <laughs> and a great star fell from heaven. So I think here's the meteor. Uh, the meteor. The meteor, yeah. And and it doesn't. This one is not being thrown. It's just um, it's just falling. To heaven. So the first, the first one, the mountain is being thrown to heaven, thrown from heaven. It's being hurled like a baseball. So you can imagine the angel throwing the mountain like a baseball at the earth, like he's ticked at everybody. And here the the angel sounds, and a star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died from the water because it was made bitter. So now we have all the salt water is affected because of the great mountain that, that went into the sea. All the salt water, all the grass is gone. A third of the trees are gone. And um, now a third of the fresh water is made bitter. The wormwood is the name of a plant, and it's a very bitter plant. And if you eat enough of it, or in this case, drink enough of it, it can kill you. So that's what's happening. We have to have water to survive, don't we? So <laughs> you don't know. Probably at the time there isn't testing to find out if the water is bitter or not. So we're drinking the water, and our water filtration systems are not going to take that out of the water. So we're going to pull water in from the lake or whatever, you know, groundwater, wherever we get it. It's going to be bitter. It's going to kill off people by the thousands drinking this because we drink a lot of water, don't we? At least we should. I drank a gallon and a half yesterday. I was pretty darn proud of myself until I stepped on the scales this morning and find out I didn't get rid of a gallon and a half of water. <laughs> so I'm like, do Good thing I'm not going for a weigh-in at the doctor. <laughs> so, now we have the waters are bitter. So if you think you're going to go bass fishing and have a good time, it's got to be killing off the, the fish in the fresh waters too, this warm wood, this poison. So, vegetation on the earth, salt water on the earth, fresh water on the earth. God, what are you doing here? Come on. This is just crazy. How are we going to survive? And we're not, we're not even three years in here. Okay? We don't exactly know the timeline, but we're not even three years in. We could only be three days in to the seven-year tribulation. I'm guessing we're a year, year and a half right in there. Maybe two years in. So... Whoever's on earth at the time is trying, has to live with this. Trying to find fresh water, trying to find something to eat, scrounging for any kind of vegetation. You know that you got to eat vegetation to, to make your insides work right? If you eat meat all the time and no vegetation, you're going to be all stuck up. You're going to have a, a whole digestive tract of just meat. You won't even be able to get out. It'll be all plugged up in there. You've got to have vegetation to move stuff through and get everything moving. And we are already had a shortage for vegetation. This is a bad time, guys. This is horrible. This is... I, I, don't, I can't even describe how... And then we get to this fourth angel. Fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck. And a third of the moon and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. So, what happens if a third of the sun is not burning? 
It's going to be called. It's it going to. Go ahead. Like it isn't already? No. It, nowhere near like it would, would be if the sun doesn't shine. Ice age thing. Yeah. It is going to. It's going to. So basically, we've got a third of the earth that's uninhabitable. Right, Sterling? Mm -hmm. The northern and southern halves. Yeah. The only place that still have stuff would be the middle. The middle. Around the tropics. Around the tropics. So the north and the, and the south, it'd be like Santa Claus would be happy. <laughs> because he's got, his, his territory would be expanded. <laughs> but, and, and think, the light too. Light gives us, sunlight gives us vitamin D. Sunlight helps us, helps our moods and our attitudes. It helps us to function more proper. You ever, you ever notice that when you're, when you're in the house and say you're, you're sick and you're down and you're binge watching Castle or something on TV and um, you, you, just, you just don't feel like yourself. You're just, oh man, or, or NCIS. I, I've, been, I, I've been watching NCIS one time and that was fun. Um, my favorite thing to binge watch though is the Karate Kid movies or Die Hard, but then I have to watch my language afterwards because yippee ki yay. And um, <laughs> I, I just don't, I just don't feel real good afterwards. But you get up and you get outside, and the first time you put your face towards the sun and that warm sun hits you, you it changes your mood just like that. You're like. And all of a sudden, gloomy turns to bright. Well, here in this, we've got no, no sunlight for part of the time, no moonlight for part of the time. You look up and the stars are gone, so you, you can't navigate if you need to navigate. I don't even know if compasses will work because yeah, Sterling's going to come back with me on that and tell me all the compasses are going to work. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, so we, navigation might be made difficult because the stars are going. You're going to be completely disoriented. So above not having any vegetation, the animals dying, the fish dying, um, the the seas are all red and stinky and smelly, and and remember all the pollutants in the air from the forest burning. So we the the, the ozone layer is all smoky and. And so now we've got the rivers um, and, the, and the fresh water are all bitter and taste nasty. And now uh, to, to disorient people completely, there's only sun part of the time, moon part of the time, and, and stars are gone. Oh, wow. The whole, that's the whole earth, isn't it? That's everything, everything that we know of. <coughs> we better pray that there's, a, that there's a rapture. The rapture is God and Jesus coming back for the church. And we better pray that that rapture is before the tribulation. Even though God's people are sealed during the tribulation or just before it starts, we're sealed. We better hope that He takes us to heaven so we can be spectators in heaven instead of watching and participating here on earth. Because even though we're protected, and we're, we're protected from God's wrath, kind of like the blood over, we talked about this last week, the blood over the door um, during, in Egypt so that God's people didn't suffer the plagues um, of, of Egypt. Um, that's kind of where we are during the tribulation if we're left here. But here's the deal. It's still got to affect us. Because even if we can drink the water and it's not bitter to us, we still can see the devastation. And it doesn't matter if we're here and we can see the devastation or if we're in heaven and we can see the devastation. It is going to affect us. We're going to see our fellow neighbors, our family, 
our friends. We're going to see them suffer and die at the hand of God because of their choice to not follow. You know, I heard uh, Ronald Reagan, not the president, his son, was on, was doing a, a little blurb advertisement on Newsmax the other day and talking about how he's proud to be an atheist and he is the founding founder of some atheist group and that and he ended up after his, his little commercial saying uh, proud to be an atheist and not afraid of burning in hell but you know what dude I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad for you so he doesn't believe, but yet he believes he's going to hell. <laughs> yeah. Ironic. There you go. So yeah, I'm he's, I, I think he's being facetious. Is that that was his purpose? He was he was saying that he's not afraid of it because it's not real. Is what he was saying. He's going to find out. Yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. It, exactly. And, and look at look at all the stuff that this is coming soon. Look at all that that he would have to live through not protected by the ceiling of God. Oh my goodness. Somebody's, somebody's going to be talking fast to try to backtrack and change their mind, I would, I would think. But you know what? God's doing all this to, to, the, to the evil people and they still aren't turning to Him. They're still evil. They're still in their own way. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it's real hard to feel sorry for, for somebody like that. But a, but a family member, we don't want to see a family member go through that. But you know what, at, some, at what point do you just throw your hands up and say, hey, it's your life, it's your decisions, you do what you want to do. You know, because we can, the old saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. And, and that's, that's true. <laughs> Me, I would be grabbing that horse's beak and sticking it down in the water, I would have a dead horse because I drowned in it because that's how obstinate I am. I, I want to make that, that horse drink. Yeah, and if your horse has a beak. You're <laughs> not really a horse. Not really a horse. <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Is it a nose or a snout? I don't, I don't know what it is. These horse people, what is it? No. It's a nose. It's a muzzle, okay, the muzzle. He's sticking his muzzle down in there. I always thought a muzzle was a piece of leather that went over a nose to keep it from biting you or something. I, I, don't, I don't know. You can call it a nose. <laughs> okay, I can't call it a beak though, huh? You, you can call it whatever you want. Then we'd have a Gryffindor. Huh? If we had a beak, then we'd have a Gryffindor. Oh, a Gryffindor, there we go, yeah. Oh, and so all this is going on, the stars are messed up, and the sun's messed up, and the earth, the whole earth's messed up, and, uh, and then, you know, John is seeing all this in his vision, and he's saying, and then he says, I looked, <laughs> text this, I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice. So did he actually see the angel flying through heaven? Or did he just hear the angel flying through heaven? I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing. I guess it really doesn't make any difference whether he saw the angel or just or only heard the angel. But what's important here is what the angel's saying. Whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of the earth. The angel is, is pitying people right now. He's like, it'd be like, it'd be, it'd be like me going, oh, I don't like seeing what's coming next. You know, kind of, um, oh man, not, not good. Like when your favorite quarterback keeps throwing interceptions, you just, oh, not good. And here this angel is warning everybody, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of 
the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. He's saying that, look, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because these next three angels, these next three dudes that are going to be blowing these trumpets, you in trouble. You understand that we're already in trouble, right? <laughs> That's what I was <laughs> You know that a lot of people are already dead, a third of the people are already dead, and and pe more people are dying every day because they don't have food to eat, they don't have they, they don't have anything to drink, they're freezing to death because the stars are gone, the sun's gone, the moon's gone, all kinds of and we're probably at each other's throat. We're killing each other. And we're probably, and then we've got the, the undead that's probably walking the earth. Everybody that got the shot is on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and, and, and the angel's like, you ain't seen nothing yet. The worst is yet to come. Just kill me now? <laughs> so what about children that don't have that can't make that choice? Children that can't make that choice. That's that's been the age old question. Is there an age of consent? Is there, you know personally, and this is this is I I can't prove any of this by the Bible, but my personal belief is that God protects children. They're innocent. That's that's well, we're all guilty because of the sin of Adam. But because we can't, because they're not old enough to make the choice for God, that they're protected. And the only place we can get, um, there's two places that we can get that from is uh, David when he lost his child and um, <clears throat> saying that he's in the, in, the, in the arms of God. And the second is Jesus saying, um, let the little children come to me. And how he scooped them up in his arms and, and protected them and fought them. Then that's those are the only two places in the Bible that I can find anything that that a great great question. Um, we just have to have faith that God's not all that mean. We know He's just, and we know that He has to do what He has to do because of because of original sin, because of what Adam Adam and Eve did. But I I don't know. I just I just have to believe that He protects the children. So, but, you know, in protecting the children, that brings up another point. Um, does that mean he's going to take the children with him if the rapture happens before the tribulation? And if he takes the children with him, how are the parents going to be knowing their children are gone? And, um, or is he going to let the children go through the tribulation and protect them but not protect the parents? So, I, yeah, the questions are just... And we can we can let like like a lot of this um, that's happening during the tribulation. We can let our imaginations run wild. We're really not going to know until it happens. Um, I I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna err on the side of the kids. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, just it. And if you if you believe that he's going to protect the children, then you rest easy in that belief. Um, and then if he doesn't, um, you're probably going to be gone by then anyway, so you'll be in heaven and it won't, and it won't matter. So either, either way, it's the best of both worlds. Um, so, yeah. Next week, when the fifth angel sounded, <laughs> and I saw a star fall from heaven, and to the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit, like the smoke of a great furnace. So, don't read the rest of it. <laughs> Click it off, Daniel. You want to read the rest of it on your time at the house. Um, and we're going to move on to this first, these next three trumpets are called the three woes. Okay, so we're going to move on to the first woe next week. 
and take a look at really how can it get worse? How can it get any worse than what it is? But these next this, these next three, they're my favorite parts in the whole Bible because the stuff hits the fan, so to speak. <laughs> so it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. You won't want to miss it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna take just a few questions before we shut down. Does anybody have any questions over what we've covered so far? Yes, James. With the water cycle on how it rains, wouldn't it be also raining blood and wormwood, so therefore everything would be red? That's that's an interesting thought. With the evaporation system, we would have to ask our, our, our resident resident scientists. Probably. Okay. Probably not. How come? Because of the temperature, water is one of the very few things that turns at room temperature to a vapor, okay. to a gas. So the rest of the stuff needs to be heated up and cooked and get it up to their temperatures to get over. And if it's dark out, and the thing where there's not enough temperature to allow that other stuff to evaporate. Okay, so no bloody rain, no no poison rain, no toxic rain, that's it's good. Sure. Hey, we found something that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta remember grass grows from underneath the ground up. So if it, like any time you go through it during the fall, springs, you'll see farmers burning their ditches and burning all the old weeds out. You know, that's all blackened, what comes up underneath, from underneath, after all that blackened burn, within a short time, grass starts to regrow. Because it grows from, their mare stem is what it calls, grows from the top, bottom of it up. So it's protected in the ground. Okay. So how quick does the grass come back? In all of this, right? Because but, if not, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to eat like wolves and other carnivores and right. and stuff like that to survive. But wolves eat dead, dead, stuff. yeah, dead stuff. Mm. Yeah. So, um, from us from the science point of view, would the poison water affect the plants? It depends. On Worm, wormwood. Probably not as much because they go through with the filter system and they suck everything up. Okay. So it would be. I don't know. It could. It would be a poison, but it's not like what we give it. Uh, not for like uh, stuff. When we put stuff on the kibble, you know, like Roundup, it's sucked up by the roots. It's a poison that kills them. So, the, so it could kill them all with the wormwood. Okay. People in Flint probably wouldn't notice the difference. <laughs> they got new water system now. <laughs> Is there any other questions? No? If the first trumpet sounds and the whole earth is on fire, how many people are going to get in boats and try to go to sea for the second one to take up? Shannon's going to. How many people are going to, going to get on boats? Because uh, I, I don't, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. That's not really going to save them because you said later on a third of them are gone. Your right, right. chances are over with. Yeah. 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 Get somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> it would be better to be on fresh water because um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a it, yeah, it's a little later. And it's a it's a smaller boulder being thrown to in the fresh water too, so I, I don't know. <laughs> it's crossed. The second trumpet just sounds like Australia. Yeah. No, no, there's no there's no place to hide. You're you're just you're screwed no matter which way you I wouldn't be able to stay if it's after the first one started that way. Right, right, yeah, you'd want to go. But. but those that don't know that it's coming, if they don't believe that it's coming. Well, that's they, there. That's yeah. <laughs> they've already been, look at me. They've already been warned. <laughs> they've been warned for years. Actually, uh, the Bible does talk about the people that are here. And we'll be looking at that in the next couple of weeks. The people that are left and their whole mindset and 
what's happening to them and all of that. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get to that next week. Father God, thank you so much, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the warnings that we have. Thank you for um, letting us know the end of the story and to know that you win, uh, and that you, uh, you avenge those who, who do wrong to us and your people, and help us to, uh, to have, show mercy to others. Help us to uh, um, uh, be kind to our enemies and uh, help us to win souls for you. Lord, we just pray that you would watch over us, that you would protect us, and, and that you would uh, um, help us to be uh, not Bible-thumping Christians, but, but people-loving Christians where we can spread your word and, and others will want to be around us. And we just pray that, um, that you continue to protect us and uh, that um, the rapture comes before the tribulation starts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
so much for being who you are and watching over us, for giving your mercy. And Lord, we ask uh, <coughs> for your blessings out on us this week. Keep us safe and help us to uh, read your word, pray, and concentrate on you. In Jesus' name, go in peace.